Hello, this is Spencer from S3 Arts, and today I'm going to be making this video taking you through the step-by-step -step process to turn your air dry clay into the dragon skulls like you see in the background here. Now this is the first week of digital classes. What I'm doing is dropping off these uh, pre-measured clay bags to your libraries where you can pick them up and either join me for a digital Zoom meeting or you can simply pick these up, take it home, and then watch videos like this later to create your skull um, on your own. This will be the first of three or four videos. I'm going to do my best to post the videos as quickly as possible. But what uh, we're going to do in this first one is the step-by-step -step to actually shape the clay into the dragon skulls and of course you will be able to do these however you want anything you want to change or adjust make sure you're making the skull the way you want but a lot of the steps are going to be the same and then at the end you'll be able to play around with the clay and change it to make it your own so all of the clay is processed so separated measured rolled up put in the bag with gloves and a mask and just keeping everything as clean as possible, disinfected, dropped off at your library. So when you get your clay, you won't have to worry about that. And we'll just take this bag, and you can just rip a little hole in it, pull the clay out. Now you don't have to worry about saving the bag. If you do have it in a pretty good one piece, we can use that again, but it's okay if not. So this is an air dry paper based clay. So it's made out of paper and it's going to dry overnight. So we won't have to fire this or anything like you would clay for pottery. The first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of massage it around, break it up a little bit, let it come back to life. Since it's been sitting bagged up, although it is an airtight bag, it may be a little stiff it shouldn't be very dry it should still be somewhat sticky now since this is a paper based clay we're going to use very little water almost no water in fact i'm not even using a bowl of water i just have a damp sponge and what i'm going to do when i wet my clay is just push on that sponge with one or two fingers to put the water on since it's paper based just like if we were to put water on a piece of paper, it's going to break down, almost melt. So we're going to use as little water as possible. Now we're also not using any tools. Of course, if there's any areas where you want to make something really small, add a little more detail, you could use like a popsicle stick or a toothpick if that's something you'd like to do. But once my clay has been brought back to life, I'm going to start by making a simple pinch pot. So I'm going to round it up so that it's a little more of a ball. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to take my thumb and just press it into the middle, or as best I can the middle. And then I'm going to press and spin the clay. And what we're doing is opening this clay ball up so that we can stretch it out to shape it into the skull shape. So we'll start with this small hole, and then I'm going to push my thumb from the inside and then my fingers on the outside, and that's going to make it larger. Now, if I were to keep doing that, I would end up with maybe a bowl or a vase, but what I'm going to do is start pushing that clay in the direction that I want to shape the skull. So our skull is going to start as a long oval shape. So what I'm going to do is squish it down a little more, make it a little longer, and then wherever it's the thickest, so wherever there's the most clay, that area I'm going to pull outward. And you can already see how just two or three pulls is going to make this more of the shape we want. And it's always good to check from the top, because when we look at these, we're gonna see the top and the side of the head. So underneath, as long as it's making the shape we want on top, we don't have to worry too much. So once you've determined the front or the nose of the skull and then the back, we're gonna start shaping that a little further. So we're gonna start on the nose. 
And I'm again, just pushing with my thumb and those fingers to shape it how we want. Kind of starts to look like a duck's head, I always think, like a duck bill here. And I'm gonna leave that clay a little thicker in the back. So this back area here, the very top back of the skull, has a lot more clay than here. And we'll talk about what we're gonna do with that later. So you can already see how after just a few minutes of shaping, I'm already starting to get more of a skull shape. Um, one of the many things I love about this clay is how easy it is to work with. And it works very much like a non-air dry clay. So if you were making pottery or a sculpture, you'd be doing a lot of the same process. And it just takes a little bit of, of that pushing and shaping to get it to change. All right. So now I'm just gonna very slowly push these back areas. And I'm gonna kind of think of this as like a rough sketch of your skull. So I'm gonna decide where I want the eyes and I'm gonna push my thumb in. And I'll do that on the opposite side. One of the very cool things about making the skull like this and especially a dragon skull is it doesn't have to be perfect and it definitely doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. All right, so that's gonna be where my eyes are. So the brow area is naturally gonna come together up above those eyes. And then all that clay that we saved, we're gonna see what that was for. We're gonna make a line down the middle with our thumb, just pulling, kind of dragging that clay. And then we're gonna be left with the two bumps. That is, of course, gonna be turned into horns. And what I'm doing with all of my fingers, so from every direction as best I can, pulling and squeezing that clay together, which is gonna to start to form the horn. And I'll do that on both sides as best I can. All right, now, so far, this isn't a very uh, scary looking dragon. It doesn't look very uh, tough and maniacal, but that's okay. It can look however you want, and we're just getting started. So now, using my thumb and a finger from the inside, I'm going to just push and do a couple of squeezes to thin out the clay. And eventually, you'll make a hole all the way through, just like this. Kind of looks like it has an eyeball in there, but of course it's a skull, so we wouldn't want it to have an eye. So I'm gonna push and round that out so that my finger or thumb can go all the way through. And that's the beginning of our eye socket. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So just taking my thumb and mint pinching it to meet the finger underneath and just do that until it naturally breaks through. So you can see now the hole goes through this side all the way to the other side, just like it would with a skull. So let's open that up. And you can decide how big or small you want these openings to be, just like with all of the different parts of your dragon skull here. So I'm going to take a second to kind of reestablish the snout area. And that is another place where we can add some spikes and things. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But the big thing that will change this from looking like a deer skull or some other animal skull is going to be those extra little details, the little spikes, the points that we add. Maybe you want to add more than two horns. Maybe yours has four or six. But what we're going to do in anywhere we want to add those spikes is start with just a nice general thicker clay area. So I would like mine here to have spikes going down the ridge of its nose. So what I'm doing, slowly bringing that clay together, pinching it just like this. And it's just naturally pulling upward. And you can see it's not perfectly straight. It wiggles a little bit. I like that. I like it to be a little imperfect. I think it gives it a more natural look. And a lot of times, 
skulls won't be perfectly symmetrical. So this side won't look just like that side. So if it has some bumps and some wiggles and things, that's okay. Maybe that's part of the story of how you ended up with the dragon skull, right? Maybe a sword or an axe or something chopped into the skull. But you can worry about that after you have one to show. So just by that little bit of pinching and pushing, pinching and pushing back and forth, just using very simple hand building techniques, we've been able to already make a pretty nice looking skull. And if you want to stop here, you can. It doesn't have to have spikes and pokies and things, but I would like to go through. And for mine, it just makes it a little more, a little more wicked looking, I think, when they have a little spikes and things added all across. So what I'm doing, and you've, you've seen here a few times, I always sit it down after every step or almost every step. Because the important thing is we want it to sit flat. And just by naturally picking it up and setting it down and picking it up again, we're going to flatten out the bottom. And you'll see inside, it doesn't necessarily have a consistent shape. It doesn't really look like, you know, this area doesn't look the same here. And that's okay because it's the bottom. It's underneath, so we won't see that. But one thing we do want to add is our nostrils, so on the very tip of our snout. So this would be just the top of a dragon skull. It wouldn't be a full skull with the bottom jaw. All right, so let's use our thumb and just sort of push upward into the clay. So that what that's gonna do is indent the clay and also rise up here. And then I can kind of follow that line that's just naturally made. Just tiny little pinches. Anybody can do this. And then in the front, a couple more. And the slower you go, the less clay you'll move. So if you're nervous, you're not sure you know, what's going to happen, you don't want to break it or mess it up, you just go a little slower. And just like I did with the eye socket where I pinched to break through, I'm going to do that with my pinky this time. So, of course, since I'm using my pinky, it's much smaller. So I'm picking my dragon's nose, more or less. Pinching with that pinky until I can break through. And it will push in. It'll be like a bubble on the inside. And you should, you will eventually be able to break that bubble. There we are. To get our hole again. So we have our eye sockets, which we can see all the way through. We now have our nostrils, and this is going to be a fairly fragile place because it is so thin. But of course, if you're having issues with it, you can smush the clay back together or pull out some extra clay and patch it up if you need to. But if you went nice and slow, you can just sort of push and shape. And remember, if it's not perfect, if there's a crack in it, that might just make it look a little more natural, like a, like a true skull. All right, two nostrils, two eye sockets. We've started some horns here. I'm going to just shape this a little bit, and especially if there's areas that are very thick, so like here on mine is very, very thick. So I'm gonna pinch this a little bit bringing some of this out and that's going to do two things for me by making our clay as consistent as possible so the same thickness or as best we can that's going to make this dry stronger so if everything is the same thickness all the way around when it dries it's going to be stronger than if i left all this thick area back here especially in the horn area so even right now i'm going to push my thumbs from the inside up into the horns. So as I push, that clay gets pushed into the horns. Um, but what I'm doing here is moving that and establishing a jawline. Now, I'm not gonna put teeth on mine. Maybe you would like to try. You definitely can because I want it to sit flat again. So I'm going to establish, this would be like the jaw area, this would be where that bottom jaw would have been. 
but ours is just the top jaw. And then behind it, I'm going to put in an area for the ear. So I'm gonna use just my pinky again. And if you want it to be a bigger or smaller hole, just use whatever size finger fits best, especially compared to your eye. Maybe the eye you made is bigger or smaller. There we are. And with the ear area, I don't like to push that all the way through. I like to leave that just a sunken in little cavern because the shadow will get stuck in there. It'll stay nice and dark, helps add a little bit of depth to our skull. And I'll do that sometimes with the nostrils too. You don't have to break through your nostrils. You can already see the nostrils, like mine starting to dry up a little bit. There's these little cracks and things. If that starts happening, that means the clay could separate. So you can take a little bit of extra. So I just pulled it off from in here. Add some on the inside. You can kind of patch it up. Or that would be an area we would use a little bit of water. Now remember, I'm using as little water as possible. So I'm going to take just one finger. I'm going to squeeze my damp cloth and just sort of rub it on there. I don't want it to break the clay down. I just want to use it to reconnect these areas that are cracking. And once it dries all the way, those cracks and things will dry into it as you see them. So if there's a spot that's cracked that you don't care for, we want to take care of it now while we're still working, while it's still wet. And in a later video, I'll talk about different things we can do if our skulls break. I'll talk about painting them, all sorts of different ideas for that, especially. We can uh, really do a lot. And you can see the skulls I have in the background. They're all at different areas. Some of them have a base coat. Some of them have been painted metal. The two on the outside, they are not painted yet. One of those will likely be in an upcoming video. And as I was talking, you saw I was shaping these spikes here. It sort of looks like a dinosaur. And just slow little pinches. Now let's talk about the horns. Of course, the horns are going to be the biggest thing that make it look like a dragon skull. So um, I didn't do my jawline on this side yet, but that's okay. We can come back to that. But the horns, so I'm going to, working from the bottom up, this is important, and it might not always, you know, you might have to go back and forth, but to start, we want to work from the bottom up. Because what that's going to do is stretch out our clay, and then the lower area will always stay thicker than the upper area. So by stretching from the bottom up, I can go as high as the clay will allow me without having to worry about it sagging or drooping because it's getting lighter as I stretch it upwards. And now you can see this is naturally putting in some kind of stretched out groove marks and things. If you like the texture you're getting just from that, you can keep it. Other things you can do is twist the horn. That will make it uh, have some different textures and things. You can bend the horns. And again, the examples in the back, each one of those has different horns. Um, I think I'll keep these ones straight because I don't have one with just pointed horns. In the same way, see, so from the bottom up. And if you work this way, the long way, can stretch out even more clay move a little bit of clay even faster but of course work as fast as you want or you need to now my horns aren't exactly the same size it doesn't really bother me but if you have a big difference you may just have to remove some clay from one side and I can even stretch this one out a little further and just by grabbing at the base of the horn, you're able to move and change the directions. You could have them go out and up. They could come forward, however you want to do it. And see, just moving them a little bit created some of those nice natural grooves and things. So I always like to kind of wiggle and pull mine around a little bit just to give it 
some cool little texture in there. And then, just once you found your final shape, bend it to the way you want. And what I'm doing here is sort of reconstituting the final tips, try to make them come to a little bit more of a point. And that's just from pinching all the way around. Whoops, knocked one of these spikes off, that's okay. All right, so now I'm just gonna take a few minutes to go through, make sure I've got everything how I want it, because once I'm done, I'm just gonna let this sit. Now, you want to have it sitting either wrapped in a plastic bag, maybe even the plastic bag it was packaged in, so if you were able to open it without ripping the bag too much, or you want it to sit in a cool, dark place. You could even put it in a cabinet or something. Um, the slower it dries, the stronger it will be because any areas that are cracked won't dry so fast that they separate. So you could leave it maybe in a cool garage or a basement, something like that. And you can even just leave it sitting out as long as there's no sunlight getting it. If you wrap it up in a bag, it will take longer to dry. It'll take more than the 24 hours, but the slower it dries, the stronger. So the last thing I'm going to do, kind of tuck around here, make sure that it hasn't pushed out this way too far because I don't want it to uh, flatten out to where it's not nice and tall. So I'm going to go through, do that a little more. And once you are happy with your shape, all you have to do, bag it up or leave it sitting out as long as it's in the cool place. And then tomorrow, you'll have an air dry skull that's ready to be painted. Now this is paper-based clay so you can use any kind of acrylic paint craft paint works wonderfully on them it doesn't have to be anything fancy now what i'm doing is taking that water just barely any water and i'm just going to go through and almost use my finger as a paintbrush so i'm putting it on as thin as i can spreading it out going through any area so back here isn't very consistent i'm gonna just shove it around maybe that could turn into another spike if you're interested you should have the most clay back here because we want this clay down low to help support the uh horns that we've made okay now you can play with this clay as much as you want. It will start to dry up, but if you are using the water, putting it on thin, then you won't have to worry about it drying up too much. So take your time, finalize the skulls, the horns, whatever you may be working on. And once you are satisfied with it, you want to sit it and leave it alone. We don't want to let this dry for two or three or four hours and then try doing something again because areas will be drying at different um, rates so if you wanted to try to bend the horn maybe it's still wet down here but not up here you could easily snap it or break it so once you're satisfied it's best just to sit it wherever you're going to keep it and leave it there all right that's all there is to it. It's really just taking your time to push and move the clay around. If you are interested in painting your clay dragon skull, please uh, look for the next video that I'll put out, which will be all about painting in different ways, different techniques, and things we can do. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day.